Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Golf Subpar with Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz. So ladies, it's football season. It's also known as the fall. Let's talk about golf. Let's stay strictly on golf today. Well, we will. But before that, talk a little bit about RLX and their new fall collection. Introducing the RLX polo shirt featuring the new True Stay collar from the RLX Fall 2024 collection. The RLX True Stay collar for performance polo shirts offers a sophisticated blend of style and functionality, perfect for both the golf course and everyday wear. Its innovative design features a removed hidden button, delivering a sleek, streamlined appearance that enhances the shirt's overall tailored look. Additionally, the collar is reinforced with advanced materials, ensuring it maintains a crisp, pristine shape even after prolonged use. Whether you're navigating the greens or heading to a casual meeting, this collar combines elegance with endurance performance, keeping you looking sharp and polished throughout the day. Ralph Lauren is the official outfitter of the United States Ryder Cup team and partner of the AJGA. Ralph Lauren is proud to continue its sponsorship of golf ambassadors Andrea Lee, the BMW PGA champion Billy Horschel, who looked rather nice out there on the golf course, Davis Love III, Devin Bling, Doc Redman, Jonathan Bird, Mega Gane, Nick Watney, Sean Foley, Smiley Kaufman, Todd Anderson, Tom Watson, Trevor Werbelow, Troy Taylor III, Tyler Strafacci, and Zach Johnson. The RX collection is available in select Ralph Lauren stores, exclusive private clubs and resorts, and online at ralphlauren.com. We got the new fall collection going on right here. It's rather nice. Mm, beautiful per use. Not Good quite time fall to get here in Scottsdale, up. but yeah, we're getting there. We're not quite to the pullover slash cashmere weather yet, but it's tolerable at least. We got out there and golfed our ball a little bit this past week. That was we nice. We did. Let's give it. Some other people golfed their ball really well. Very good. We had yeah. a little uh, two groups up at Whisper Rock on Friday after Friday morning ish. Uh, we had a pros group and a Joe's group. By the way, your boy Wyndham Clark wanted to play a match pros versus Joe's. Uh, wasn't wanted to give us half of our strokes, which yeah. is just not enough. Ridiculous, as, as will be evidenced by what you're about to hear. So we go out there and play. They're the first group off. I get a text from Wyndham. They just finished. We we're on finishing up on 17 green, heading to 18 t. Uh, we couldn't agree on a team bet, so we just said, you know what, forget it, no big deal. I played Max in an indie. Wyndham texts me, goes, we'll take that team bet if you want. I'm okay. Like, oh, <laughs> really? After you finished, I'm guessing y'all played pretty good. Well, come to find out. The, the foursome included Wyndham Clark, Max Homa, Kevin Chappell, and J.J. Spawn. Combined for zero bogeys, Wyndham was the high man in the group at 66. Kevin Chappell, 65. Max Homa, 63. I beat him 3-2, and two, by the way. And uh, J.J. Spawn, 61. With a putt on 18 that the rest of the group thought was for 59, but they have oh, no idea how listen, to keep scores, so it turns out it was actually for 60. They hit, Regardless, good golfing they hit the by gol- the squad. They hit the golf ball really nice. Their math, not so good. How do you think it would have shaken out with half handicaps caps for our squad against that? I did. I mean, it would have been boat raced. So I proposed a best to next. So first ball, it's just one best ball out of the group. If it's tied, it goes to the second one. They shot 18 under yeah. on their first ball. Yeah, okay, yeah. we would have lost one down because none of us birdied 18. Oh, wow. That's yeah. one you typically get. Too. Yeah. yeah, good golfing of the ball. Good good for Team USA, Max and Wyndham. Wyndham, high man, was 66, but... Um, um, yeah, things, things feel in a good spot going up there. And golf's really the only thing that happened this weekend, so we should just probably talk about President's Cup and BMW PGA, dude. lot to get to in that. Man, we, better that get, one, we better get to it. That one was very exciting. Uh, three-man playoff, Billy Horschel, Roy McIlroy, and Thurston Lawrence. Uh, Billy Ho, birdied 17 and 18 to get in the playoff. And then Eagles, the second playoff hole for a win, his second win there in three years. Roy McIlroy just continues to play unbelievable, consistent golf. Just can't hoist the trophy. This has got to be like the most crushing year that he's had. He's played really good golf. He's played a ton of golf, by the way, more than I think he's you're ever going to see him play again. But not just that he's not winning, but the way that he's losing. I mean, of course, highlighted by the U.S. Open, the miss on the 72nd. That one's pretty tough. A little bit later after that, uh, Irish Open, I would say probably the most meaningful tournament to him outside of the major championships, I would think. Loses that one close. Goes to the Olympics. Finishes fifth, just off the podium, no medal there. And then back-to-back runner-ups now on the DP World Tour. Played four events on DP World Tour, runner-up three times out of those four. I just feel like everything is close, but no cigar. And it's not just that he's losing, it's it's the way that he's losing. Billy, 35-foot, just beautiful putt for Eagle, ball game. He's losing tough, tough ones. I think he's ready to turn the page on the year, or I would be at least. But shout-out to Billy Ho. That was awesome to see him go over there. I mean, take down one of the best players in the world, and Roy McIlroy going to do a lot for his confidence going forward. I mean, he has just turned it around, going from last year at the Memorial where he was in tears doing an interview because yeah. he was so lost to now 
winning on the PGA Tour again this year, and now winning on the DP World Tour at their flagship event against a, a loaded field. Congrats to him. He looks great in his polo. Props to him. That's hard to do, to go from, like, I'm broken, I'm going to air it out on national television, be very honest, which most people would just hide, you know, wouldn't even wouldn't even go do that interview. But to say that, like, I'm lost, I got to restart, and then to come full circle like he has, that's, you don't see that a whole lot, especially for, like, he's not the youngest dude on the PGA Tour now. Speaking of broken... You want to talk about it? I was trying to. You want to talk about it? I don't really, but um, I will because I am a man well, of honor. Time out. I need to zone in for this. This is this is going to take some. <laughs> this is going to take some uh, some heart here. That's a little nine milli. All right. Well, here we go. It, get me because uh, we had a little wager going heading into the Iron Skillet, mm. SMU versus TCU in beautiful Dallas, Texas, on a Saturday afternoon. My Mustangs just threw a little 66 points at your Horn Frogs. Give it to me. Give me everything. I so want it. I want we, the pain. We agreed it on was the bet. Embarrassing. We agreed on the bet that the loser has to order the other team's shirt, a nice polo golf shirt with the SMU logo on it. You got to rock it the next time we play and film a little video saying how great SMU is and how TCU sucks. I will be buying the shirt. I'm sure they'll be on sale. Not a lot of demand for those. Good news for me. Um, but I want, I want all the hate. It is. Y'all suck. That was not the. That's not the most hurtful loss at TCU because like the, the expectations weren't that we're going to be great this year, playoff, win the Big Twelve, any of that stuff. But I think it's the most embarrassing loss ever. Not just losing, getting dump trucked, giving up twenty eight points without your offense even being on the field. Tough to win games. Three defensive like that. and a special teams touchdown. Didn't stop a run one time. We're soft as shit. We're poorly coached. Oh, and by the way, our coach gets kicked out one play, one kickoff into the second half, which I've. I've watched a weird amount of hours of football in my life. I've never seen a coach get tossed. And I was just like, well, that's a first. It was a horseshit call. Would have changed the whole game? Possibly. But, dude, we're on a fast track to mediocrity right now. You take out, you take away that one season where we went to the Natty. Um, it's been very, very mediocre. So, figure it out. See, fix it. It's this shit. Is, this is what you did on radio. You just... All this, you said all the talk was about TCU. Why can't you just say SMU played a really nice football game? You you pick up fumbles and return them to the house. <laughs> well, very hold nicely. on to the damn ball. Exactly. It's just here you go. Want some points? Think, there you go. I think we worked really hard this week in practice about punching the ball out. My attention's not on SMU. My attention is on TCU. And right now, somebody better step up in that room and figure it out because we're trash. We're gonna play Kansas this week. They run the ball every play. We're gonna fucking lose to them, and then it's gonna be that seat's gonna start getting warm. Wow, there, just a year forward. and a half. Probably hire old Coach Lashley from SMU. Maybe just, call him up to the bigs like we did Sonny. After going to the national championship, you're already call, calling, I'm calling for Sonny for it. I'm to get the fired. Seats, the seat's getting warmed up, dude. The wow. seat's getting warmed up. I'm convinced. I'm partly, you know, I'm a big conspiracy theory guy. I'm partly convinced that Sonny Dykes is an SMU plant. You sent him over to sabotage okay. the program. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm, not gotta, putting, I'm not saying it's out of the realm of That's why he got ejected and all the fans were booing you the shit out of him. Yeah, you got to sell it. He's right. doing a well, good job you lose. It. I look forward to seeing you in a very nice SMU polo. I want that logo to be big, too. Yeah, we'll see. Red, white, or blue, good news. I look good Maybe we all. call Malbin and have him design something really nice. <laughs> something that something really loud. stands out. Yeah, something aggressive. Yeah, I wouldn't be mad at that. I love it. But way to go, ponies. Winner of the Iron Who's Skillet. Tough? Uh, Rhett Lashley also cooked his breakfast Sunday morning. In the I respected Iron Skillet. that. that was I respected nice. that. You need some hate back and forth, and you need some of both sides winning football games um, for it to be a good rivalry. Similar to what we could, what we need actually at the Presidents Cup. Like the internationals need to find a way to make this an actual event because it's headed towards like nobody caring. It's just like a tune-up for the Ryder Cup. Yeah, uh, the internationals have won one Presidents Cup back way way back when Frank Nabilo was a part of the team down at Royal Playing Melbourne the, with mashies. Um we had the uh, we had the we had the tie over in South Africa. That was a good which one. Which was which was awesome. But other than that, it's been all USA and listen, I want USA to win. I know Jim Fear got pissed off when he said some reporter said, "Hey, I want it to be closer. I want the internationals to actually win to get some juice in this thing." I want USA to win. I do. But as people that cover golf, and have to talk about it. Like, I want to be into it on Sunday. I don't want it to be a six-point blowout, and this thing doesn't really matter, and half the matches on Sunday don't matter. Let's keep this thing somewhat close with USA pulling it out late. Yeah, Liberty National, where it's like, hey, we want this thing to be over before singles, and it wasn't mathematically, but it basically was. We were one point away. Like, 
that's just not good for the event. And it, I think it's tough sledding for the internationals. I hope they can make it competitive. They got decimated. Or they, their team took a big hit with live guys going and not being able to play in that thing. In the U.S., I mean, you just look at average world golf ranking. It's it's hugely lopsided. And there's a situation where, depending on how they were to match up the singles, where they'd be dogs in all 12 matches. I just think with that many points, that few people sitting out uh, each session, you know, unlike the Ryder Cup, it's just... I mean, the law of averages like that. It's a they have to do something really special, or USA is going to be they have to be really rusty or really bad. And by the way, the USA team USA getting up to Montreal uh, with more time before the competition than they did actually going to Rome. Yeah, so I like that. We're adapting they're and we're be, learning. They're going to be ready to go. I, I'm interested to see if if USA does happen to win rather easily again. When does this conversation start about like let's mix up the format here at the Presidents Cup? Let's make this thing where we can somehow figure out a way for it to be more competitive if we're going to keep doing it because we all get so excited for the Ryder Cup. It's a, Even though the last like five Ryder Cups haven't really been close, we still get so hyped for it. I feel like the President's Cup doesn't get all that and much they, But at love. least they've been back and forth, you yeah. know? Like each side's winning. They haven't been yeah. close, but each side's winning. It's a rivalry. It's not just, oh, you guys never content. You guys never even make it a competition. But At this point, I don't know what there is to lose. If this is a runaway to the U.S. side, it's like, what do you got to lose? The event's kind of losing juice. It, it, instead of just being a worse version of the Ryder Cup, turn to something else. Turn yeah, to the best we, version of whatever. Like Zurich did when they said, we're going to be a two-man team, a two-man event. Great. Now you have an identity. Now you're something yeah, different. There's, you know, we, we've talked about it on our radio show, possibly make the President's Cup a mixed team event. Get the women in there. Have six men, six I'll women. change it up. And let's go. I mean, the Korean women are so strong. You got Lydia Ko from New Zealand who could help out the team quite a bit. Um, she obviously doesn't get to play in the Solheim Cup. It'd be awesome to see her in one of these team events. I think it'd make it a lot of fun. I think it'd make it very competitive. But uh, let's just sit back and see what happens. I mean, the Canadian fans are going to be rowdy up there. They got three Canadians on the team to um, cheer for. And I I, I hope it's close. Um, last time they played at Royal Montreal, I believe, was 2007, where Mike Weir beat Tiger in singles. But US, Team USA still went on to win. I'm excited for it, but I just hope it stays um, somewhat close. You mentioned the live guys that aren't allowed to play on the team because the PJ tour owns the president's cup and that's never going to happen. Shout out to the rippers, the Aussie boys, Cam Smith, Mark Leishman, uh, Lucas Herbert and Matt Jones, who won the live team championship. Rather exciting. I'll be honest. I was watching the cowboy game and they were getting their shit kicked in. So I, uh, I was flipping back and forth to the live quite a bit because it was really entertaining. I caught a little bit as well because TCS, and you actually played on the CW, which I did not know that they actually aired football on the CW, but caught some of it. Uh, I was a little, I, I kind of, I knew the format was like match plays, you know, two individuals and then a team match for each one. And you go, the last day I turn it on and I see like minus eight, minus six. I was like, what's going, are we back to stroke play? So I didn't know that the final day was stroke play. But as we've mentioned with like Eastlake, props to them is like, they're, they're making this, they're, they're end of the year, the ultimate prize, right? The team championship. They pumped the team element so much over there. They had one round for all the marbles and it was close and there was volatility and it went back and forth and changed hands. Like that's kind of what we're talking like East Lake lacks mm -hmm. is there's only a couple guys that even have a chance of making this a competition. It could be a snooze fest all the way through. You and I have thrown out some proposals to, you know, whittle it down and then have one day for all the marbles. Um, they did that. So and it's just tough for that. Like they're, they're in Dallas on a Sunday when Dallas Cowboys playing a home Not game the best during decision. football season. I think you'll see that tweak as they go forward it's just you you can't compete against football like if the u.s runs away with this president's cup on sunday or on saturday if it's a landslide going into sunday yeah. like, it's not going to get many eyeballs yeah i'm with you um but it was exciting and two teams that really had terrible years in the iron heads and the, and the four aces were right there in the mix four aces had a pretty big lead before the rippers ended up um catching them so it was shout out to them. It was, it and was Legion had exciting. a rough go with, oh, with Rom getting that's brutal. Deathly sick. Your horse goes down basically. Yeah. He's got a lot going on right now. Obviously. I mean, they said severe flu like symptoms. Uh, him and his wife, Kelly are expecting a, a baby girl any day. Now I just saw he withdrew from the pro-am over in Spain. He's supposed to be playing the Spanish open this week, which obviously is his home country. And I know he yeah. wants to be there, but that still sounds kind of up in there. Hope he gets better soon. Hope everything goes well. Um, and John can get back to playing. But tough for Legion 13 to lose the best player. Drew yeah. Hatton can only do so much. Best suit on the tour. Yeah. Uh, not playing. Shout out John Catlin for coming in. He filled yeah. in a bunch of teams this year. Probably going to, I bet he gets a permanent spot next yeah. year. Um, fun to watch. But congrats to your Broncos. They now have one win. Just need four and a half more. <laughs> Please. That was a big one yeah. for both you and I, by the way. And I just need something good to happen yeah. in my life, football-wise. 
it's been tough sledding for the kid for a while. They looked like a real football team. It was it was fun to watch. Threw it down the field a few times, which I haven't seen not all year. And the Bucks, I mean, leading up to that, you could make the argument they looked the best in the league. Um, one and two, not great, but one game closer to five yep. and a half, which is all that matters. Tied with the Cowboys, who suck. Uh, yeah, can't stop the shit. run, can't run the ball. Uh, somehow almost made an incredible comeback against the Ravens. Got an onside, onside kick. Onside kick, you never see. Shout in out Brandon Aubrey, best player on the team. It's not even close. Our kicker's a stud. Um, that's about all we got. He makes less than a mil, and he's gonna. He should probably break off just a sliver of Dak's new deal. Maybe he's, kick it to him when, so when you good. can. When you're lethal or you're dangerous from seventy and in, that's that's a nice piece yeah. to have. But we suck. It's gonna be a long year. We, uh, we're gonna stink too. By the way, the NFC East just sucks in general. The Eagles pulled out a miracle. Somehow they ended up winning against the Saints, but NFC sucks. We got producer Mark's Giants suck. this Thursday. Cowboys Giants Thursday night. Uh, if, we lose, if we lose them, I might not it's just a talk big about one. Football. They're coming off a big dub, too. Huge big dub. dub. They doesn't get any bigger Daniel than Jones that. is back. The NFC is lethal. Uh, Lamar Jackson, I didn't. the stat's going everywhere now, but 28-1 and one against the NFC. Yeah, he owns the Lifetime. NFC. He should just get to the joke. Super Bowl. Just trade conferences. He get to the Super Bowl every year. Just swap <laughs> just it out. Conferences. Yeah, just swap out with yeah, somebody I'm sure else. The, I'm sure Baltimore's really looking to trade the two-time NFL MVP. We, let us in. Uh, we'll take Lamar. Y'all can have Dak. That feels fair. Okay. That feels fair. I like it. Uh, before we get to our guest this week, another big shout out to Golf Kohler. We had an awesome time up there. Whistling straights, a straight course. I think it got my game dialed. I think it, it got me back. We you, played, you played this week. The, that was the best I've seen you looking along. Hit it the best I've seen you hit it long in a long, long time. Yeah. It is weird that I like, didn't have a sip of alcohol for a week and actually slept like eight hours every night. It helps when, that you're actually not, helps. when you don't shake on the first <laughs> tee. It is, I've found that it is helpful, but it it's not as much fun. Much better. But uh, our man Charles Barkley was actually up at Whistling well, Straits. He probably so, killed it. Uh, we think Chuck shot it. Hopefully, whistling. hopefully our caddies that we had that were fantastic uh, didn't have to deal with Charles. Great tipper, by the way, but you're going to have to work rather hard looking for that golf ball. That ain't going to be a fast round around Whistling. With old Chuck. By the way, shout out to them. We didn't even talk about this. It's a nice, it, look, it ain't cheap to go up there and play world-class golf courses. One of the best public courses in the country. They give you a free brat or hot dog at the turn. I think that's a nice token. Love you know that. what I mean? Just like, thanks for coming out. Here's a dog. Get you correct for the back nine. Birdie, that's a birdie. Anything free is nice when you're paying birdie a bunch dog, of money. Birdie dog, birdie brat, whatever you want to call right, it. Just maybe that's built into the fee, but it just feels better to not have to pay for the dog, you know? 100%. Yeah. If it's Props free, it's for me. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get to our guests. This is, this is going to be a fun one. Um, knows a little bit about football, loves him some golf. He's absolutely hilarious. He's a Manning, but not Eli or Peyton. We got Cooper Manning joining us on this week's Subpar. All right, we've got a fun one on our hands here today. You've seen him as the host of the Manning Hour on Fox. Without question, the most athletic and funniest member of all of his siblings. And not to mention his son, Arch, just picked up his first win as starting quarterback down at the University of Texas. Cooper Manning is here. How we doing, Coop? I am great. So glad to be a part of this dynamic duo. What a, what a treat. You know? <laughs> I've been waiting well, for, my, to have you. for my day, you know, and I'm, I'm glad it's, it's today. Well, we are glad to have you. And we were just talking before the show. There's actually been a little incident up at the President's Cup in Montreal. Um, some people stealing some of the, the gear up there, and here you are rocking a nice yeah, new dude. President's Cup piece. Sick. You're the only guy. <laughs> I just I just bought it on the corner of Bourbon Street and Canal right here, you know, a little about an hour ago. It, 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 it felt hot, but it's really good to know that I'm, you know, buying stolen goods. Now, my boys at Summit Brands, they always send me some great swag. I'm a, you know, zero guy and a be ready guy. So my man Jack Lessing always makes sure I look the part, even though I might not be in Montreal. But, um, You're you know, looking good. You look good. Looking good. There's a nice black market for golf quarter zips out there if you're willing to look hard enough, you know? Yeah, well, you can go in Peyton's closet alone and get all the quarter zips you need for at least two calendar years. So I'm glad to keep, you know, keep the Manning thing alive with the quarter zips. Does he have more quarter zips or jobs? Man, that is a hardworking dude, I will tell you. <laughs> he is not uh, – let the grass grow under his feet. He was cool. He came down. He actually did a little surprise visit and made his first trip to Austin for a football game this week. Didn't tell anybody. Didn't want Arch to know and came in and over to our little place and had a few pops and then snuck in and snuck out before the uh, the game was over. So, um, yeah, he does not. He likes he likes being on the move and going and action and working. And, um, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's just not slow down. 
How about his little appearance in uh, Knoxville, in Tennessee, with Morgan Wall and the walkout? Did you see that? He put on the old yeah, gear, looked know, sharp. He mentioned that to me in Austin. He goes, I'm, I'm going to go to Knoxville tomorrow night, and you know Morgan wants me to do the walkout. And I'd seen Eli do it. I saw Brady do it. I saw some guys, and it, they all kind of look like, because I'm not sure I'm cool enough to kind of just – you know, be hyping it up and dancing and getting fired up. <laughs> and so his old trainer suggested maybe he wear a jersey. And he's like, I don't know. I hadn't worn a Tennessee jersey in, you know, 32 years. So I, I guess and he goes, no, 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 we're going full uniform. And I was like, you know what? Shit, if you're going to do this, go ahead and let it rip. You, you're gonna, you know, you're going to get heat anyway. Go ahead and go. <laughs> I like those white cleats. He always wore black cleats when he was there. Those white cleats make you look a little faster, even though he was just kind of <laughs> doing high knees, getting loose. So I thought it was pretty funny. The place went nuts when they showed him, because that's the first thing they showed on the screen. Then when he put the helmet on and started hitting his helmet, I was like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's all he needs to get hit in the head a little bit more. Dear exactly. Yeah. He uh, filled it out nice, I thought, though. He looked great. The day. It looks like he's in that gym. Yeah, you know, I, he looks like he's slimmed down. We were in Denver playing, but I think it's also good. You know, you want to roll in and wear that uniform when Tennessee's undefeated, playing well, coming off a big win in Oklahoma, right, in Knoxville. The timing couldn't have been better, so I think he read the room right. Yes, he did, no doubt. Uh, you mentioned your son, Arch. Got to talk a little bit about him. I mean, off to a rather nice start down there in Texas with Quinn Ewers being injured. Texas has got a really good team. Yeah, Quinn had a little setback, and it was fun to have Arch get some experience, you know, um, and he made the most of it. I think he enjoyed playing well. And, you know, kind of like any time you're a rookie, you're opening night, you're going to make a few uh, hiccups. But also he made some plays, and I think he loved being out there. And, you know, I, <clears throat> selfishly, I kind of look ahead to next year, and, you know, Texas goes in their opening game. They go to Ohio State in the opening game. Ooh. So Ooh. selfishly – I think I'm glad he had a, a, a few some snaps, know what it's like to start, play a little bit, because going into Columbus for your first start of your life would probably not be the ideal uh, opener. So I'm glad he's got some, uh, you know, got a little gray hair there. Yeah, yeah the shoe, tough place to open up your career. No Day kidding. one. I don't, I don't know who Coop, was drinking given, making this schedule, but dear goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a hey. Props to them for doing it. It's nice to see these non-conference matchups where the two big programs collide. But given the hype that Arch had coming out of out of high school, how important was it? And he went to a place where he didn't have to be the guy right away, right? Quinn Ewers was going to be that guy more than likely. How important was that to you guys? To have, like, let him be a kid for a minute, not just be thrown into it. Well, I think um, you know you got to remember when Arch committed to Texas, they were coming off a five and seven season, so. I think a big part of why he liked Texas is because they had a great history. They had um, a new coach coming, a, kind of a new program feel, and knew they had the potential to be great. You weren't just falling in line to one of these programs that's been great every year. And the idea of being a part of something and growing it and getting some other guys who are kind of seeing the same momentum. And he loved the way Sark runs a program and play calling. And then also, yeah, again, not have to come in there and be the guy and go ahead and learn, get better. So when you do, when your number is called, you're ready to play and you perform well. There are too many scenarios, and we're seeing all over the NFL where guys are getting thrown in and you know not doing as well as they should. But shoot, they're not supposed to. I mean, I have fond memories of Peyton's rookie year and Eli's rookie year in, in the pros, and it wasn't always so pretty. Eli, Peyton still dying for someone to break his interception record. <laughs> it hasn't been broken, but he said. It'll never be broken because when they start throwing interceptions, they pull them. He's like, leave them in. Let them finish the job. So 28 <laughs> picks, rookie year, that might be, uh, you know, that's Oof. something. That means the coach really does believe in you. That's that awesome. going to stand for a while. Yeah. Unfortunately. What are you, for you, obviously, growing up and then watching Peyton and Eli play in the NFL, what are your nerves like watching them compared to now watching your son Arch play at the University of Texas? You know, it's – I'm. Tr <sighs> It's a, it's just nerve wracking. I, I was a, I've gotten a little more calm, I guess, because, um, but yeah, you could always tell on a Monday or you know or Sunday after a loss, I was in a pretty bad mood. I thought I took those games pretty tough, but um, I don't know. I'm enjoying this a little bit more. I kind of bit my fingernails and grinded it out with Peyton and Eli playing, and I'm, I'm trying to enjoy it and just I want him to enjoy it. So if he's if he's happy, I'm happy. If he's distraught, I'm probably. A little bit that way, but you just want your uh, you want your children to be happy, and you know I, I think he's got great friends on that team. They've got the best. He's got great teammates, and I think uh, 
his teammates think he's a good teammate. And those small things that maybe you know the fans don't see and the, the critics don't see are important to me. And he's enjoying it and learning and getting better and um, you know just kind of growing up, which I think is uh, what college is all about. Now, is is your youngest son Hyde? Is he at Texas as well? Yeah, Hyde is a freshman, and Hyde, the women and children, is an absolute <laughs> treasure. He would, he's probably more qualified to be on this show than I am. He is a fool, but he is a freshman, and he is a pledge, and get you know going through the ropes of that, you know, always carrying his cigarettes and lighters for in case an active needs something. And uh, he is love in Texas. He is you know he and Arch don't see each other a whole lot right now, but he's got, um, I think I think not many people wouldn't trade trade with him right now he's a happy camper so he's it's, a five-star frat frat kid five-star recruit i love i was watching um some of your stuff last night and there was actually like a commercial or something that y'all did where he was on the couch and arch archie comes to the door with some signs and you just read he says I don't you said alvin Kamara's at the door or whatever and, and hyde's doing some acting hyde has made multiple cameos in the manning hour we, i had him driving my old 1975 Chevrolet Caprice and the producer's like, can he drive? I'm like, he's 12. He can drive. He's from New Orleans. You know, it's fine. Uh, he's been drinking, he drinking gin at 13. So, I mean, this is nothing. So, uh, yeah, he's he's got a little bit of a face for, you know, radio. He likes the mic. So, we'll, we'll see what happens to him. I love well, it. Well, you got two at Texas then. You're an old Miss legend. I don't want to curse anything, but given the way things look right now and they don't play in the regular season, there's a possibility of a Texas Ole Miss in the playoffs. What's a fellow like you do in that scenario? Is that a split jersey situation? I probably just get beat up in the parking lot by somebody. Um, One of the sides. You know, yeah. yeah, Ole Miss has got a great team. Uh, Lane's obviously got that program pumping and uh, you know we spend a ton of time in Oxford I love Ole Miss I love Oxford I have great friends there and I know some of them were sad to see Arch you know choose another spot but that's good for everybody and he'll always have a soft spot for Ole Miss and you know got great friends and family there and so um, I'm excited that the SEC has got you know some new blood and some new faces that are really making moves and uh, it's going to be a heck of a heck of a season I hope I hope they don't have to play just because you know, you know, I've done enough of that when, when, you know, Tennessee was playing Ole Miss or when Peyton and Eli were playing each other. It, that's just kind of Saints were playing the Colts. That sort of stuff where you just you're kind of pulled. But uh, it's fun to be able to pull for pull for all the teams you love. It's going to be a fun season, especially with twelve getting in the playoffs. Um, can't wait for it. we're talking about the Manning Hour, tenth anniversary, ten year anniversary of the Manning Hour. Ooh. I was watching a few of them last night. I must say, the one in the spa with Cam Newton, where you are getting the Manning and Petties. Fantastic. My, might have been my favorite, Cole. That was my rookie year. And, you know, when I started doing this, they all, no one really believed we could even do it because I was kind of writing most of it. And I was trying to also track down the talent. And they were like, no one's going to do this with you. And Drew Brees <laughs> rolled his dice. I called him and said, will you come over here and just, I'm trying to get this thing off the, you know, off the page here onto the camera. Will you come over and just, borrow, can I borrow you for 30 minutes? And he came and sat on my front steps. And then the next week, I called my buddy the Giants, and he got me Odell. So then I had a veteran. I had kind of a hot shot youngster. I went out to Denver, got Von Miller, and then, bam, I had Cam and them. They were 3 or 4 and 0 oh with an off week. And I said, let's go get manicures and pedicures. And I, I wore a short robe and uh, with nothing underneath except, you know, a, a <laughs> smile. And Cam, I had two girls, you know, massaging his feet and, and giving his – nails a little freshen up and we he could have sat there for an hour i thought he was going to be tough he was a delightful and i remember that look he gave me when i you know I, we had the we had the uh cucumbers over our eyes and just said two sec legends and he kind of went like looked over like who do you think you are and so we've been, the one uh, girl that the one girl that was uh, handling his feet, I mean, you could tell she was just trying her hardest not to die laughing, especially when he started. He's like, please tell me there's something under that robe, Coop. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, now I, I tell them, all the cameramen, whenever we do anything, just if you find something funny, laugh. I don't, it doesn't need to be quiet in here. You know, enjoy it. So you know, he was a good sport. And then uh, the great folks at Fox have just given me a ton of rope to go ahead and just do whatever you want and you know more inappropriate they try to s sneak it in on network television it's a family show but uh, before kickoff and it's been fun we've done you know well over a hundred of them and 
and you kind of get the chance to show people's you know personality. And I think that's why people like to do it. You know, if you're a if you have a talent, if you're an opera singer or a magician or a dancer or can do something, and you play NFL football, you know, the Manning Hour will find you and make sure we we show you in a good light. Can you can you get that mentalist guy on, or have you done that? Because that oh, guy is that unbelievable. little wizard. Yeah, he's tricky. I, I need, yeah, I would like to get him. Um, he's probably a little overqualified for what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> he, he needs a mani patty probably too. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, I, we did do, there was a magician who's a deep snapper for the Eagles named John Dorenboss. And one year, he's a, and he's and he was on like America's Got Talent, et cetera. And man, he did one of those deals where he had it, picking a card, yada, yada, yada. And he goes, Next thing you know, he goes, take off your shoe. I mean, I had a tennis shoe tied that I'd gotten off an airplane, gone to do the deal, and sure enough, you know, pulled out my six of hearts or whatever. And I I mean, it's a, I don't know how they do it. Makes no sense. I don't understand that shoe stuff. It kind of actually freaks me out in a little bit of a weird way that I can't figure it out. And maybe there is something there. I don't know. But are you still going and getting your own? You said you were getting your talent. You were doing the writing of the bits, which I find very impressive. Are you still doing that or do you got some help? I do have some help. I have a lot of help. And so what these guys will do now is they'll help me go, hey, look, there's a guy in Cleveland who can, you know, juggle blindfolded. He's also got six sacks, you know, here in the last two games. Let's go get him. And I said, great. And well, they'll kind of frame it up, but they give me a ton of, I read it and kind of barely know it and to where I know the, the premise of what they're going and what the theme is. And a lot of times I'm in costume or whatever, but let me, you know, just kind of react and make them comfortable and try to have some fun and try to show. I always say, I want to look terrible and I want your parents to be proud of you. So you know, they all, that's why they agree to do it. So no one Mission gets accomplished. Do you have yeah. anyone like you haven't been able to get on the show that you'd really like to? I've never done a New England Patriot. You know, Belichick did not like any sort of fun going on during the week. So <laughs> I would love to get Bill on. I think it'd be hysterical. Um, speaking of Bill, Bill came down to the Manning Passing Academy this year. And my son, Hyde, who we're talking about, was kind of, he, he said, Dad, I'm going to be down here. My goal this weekend is to make Bill Belichick laugh hard once. And I was like, son, pick a new goal. It's not going to happen. You know, you're not going to do it. So sure enough, first day, Bill's standing there. And he's, you know, he's kind of always in a little salty mood. And Hyde is just standing there. And they're watching these people throw. And he looks over at Hyde and he says, uh, kind of in a demeaning way, like, what's your job here? And Hyde just said, <laughs> I have the same job as my dad. And, and Bill goes, what's that? He goes, nothing. And Bill chuckled. And I, I, I'm leaving. I did, I it. did it. I got. I made him laugh. So he was uh, at a high. I'd love to get Tom Brady, too. I mean, I always wanted Tom. Um, I have Edelman now that so he's retired. But I think those, you know, those would be two good ones since uh, Peyton and Eli have been on there a bunch. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else I'm dying to have. I, I, I was fortunate enough to get a lot of guys before they got too famous to do it again, you know, got, <laughs> so, uh, Jalen Hurts is a good buddy of mine. I think he'd be a, a good guest because he's a lot better guy, a lot, a lot more fun than he kind of seems so serious, but he's really a good hearted dude and, and got a good personality. Yeah. Belichick's in the media now, dude. We'd have never guessed that he'd be a media guy now. And all of a sudden here he is, he's in front of a camera all the time. So maybe now's the time to strike. I, I, I think you may be right. He's really good. I, I, I really enjoyed listening to him. He's, uh, you know, he came. I hung out with him a little bit at that camp. And if you if you want to talk about football, and you know, you that's the topic he wants to talk about. Don't try to, you know, tell him about your, uh, you know, your pickleball skills or something. He wants to talk ball <laughs> and great and old players and history and stuff. So he's always been great to me. That's I'll tell awesome. you one guy that made me jealous that you just got to hang out with, and that's Larry David. I think you played golf with him, if I'm not mistaken. Need to hear about it, what Larry was like, all the stuff. I was so excited. I went out to play this tournament at Cherry Hills that Peyton has kind of resurrected this um, this great event. It's a pro player deal, and then they have a um, bunch of Cherry Hill members play. But, yes, Larry agreed to play in this tournament, and I got to play a practice round with him. And um, he is just like you think he is. He was mm-hmm. – he. You know, I, I kind of, it's kind of like anything. You want things to kind of go wrong where he gets mad and aggravated because that's where he shines. So, you know, even on the first uh, first green, he had a putt and he just started yelling at it. You know, too hard, too hard, 
two. I'm like, it's on number one. And then he, he kind of fussed at his caddy. He fussed at his caddy. Caddy told him, you know, it's a little uphill. Of course, he hammered it. And he's like, don't ever tell me how hard or how soft to hit it. Unless I ask. Like, Caddy's like, yes, sir. You know, you can't tell these serious not. But he was great and uh, played nine holes, and he, he was done. He, practice round nine holes, he didn't need to see the back. He was ready for action. He hit it pretty good, too. That is awesome. He's, yeah, he's obviously a big golfer. Sleaze and I actually had dinner. We're lucky enough yeah. to be part of a dinner with him at the Kentucky Derby several years ago. And, like, a whole, a whole Curb Your Enthusiasm episode busted out because a, another table sent him a dessert, and it was fantastic. Yeah, he— he was doing. He's doing like a little Levin City circuit to where he goes around yeah. and answer questions. Peyton was actually, um, you know, going to do the kind of the moderator part. Um, I guess this week, but um, yeah, he's you know he's seventy seven. He looks great. He he drove it well, um, but you know he just doesn't. He doesn't. He he's just looking for things to get annoyed by, which is, you know. <laughs> yeah. I like, yeah. like when we went to that dinner, he came in and we were like, I was like, dude, this is one of the few guys that this one, this one matters right here. This will be cool. And he came in and he went on, didn't say hello or anything. Just went on this spiel. He's like, you're not going to believe what happened to me. I just went up and bet right before the last race. I had a trifecta, I had this, this, and this, and it hit. And then, uh, I got a cocktail and I accidentally threw away my ticket. But I went back to the lady at the ticket. I was like, "You remember me? I just, I just had the winning ticket trifecta. Like, you got to pay it out." And he didn't get paid out, and it was like this whole thing. And I was convinced. I was like, "Dude, they're recording. This is, this is for mm-hmm. an actual episode." I, you know, I, I, I was trying to, you know, ingratiate myself with him because I, I don't know. He plays golf with a lot of people, but we had done a commercial with JB Smooth, um, <laughs> and a Caesar's commercial, which was, and JB was. It was his most fun. Peyton sometimes in those commercials is kind of like, all right, we're going to hold, you know, ready to go, ready to go. And when JB could just go off script and he, he would, we would be crying and they would have to shoot from the back of our head because we couldn't, you know, contain ourselves because he doesn't follow any of the rules or any of the script. And that he said, that's exactly how they shoot curb. Just, they just kind of give him a little, like, we're going to talk about this and just let him fly. And he can't, he cannot handle, Larry cannot keep a straight face around jb it's uh it's tv gold those caesar commercials were awesome yeah i mean I, i've never met that guy but he cracks me up on the show and even those commercials when he gave you a little shout out at the end of the one commercial that's cooper i love that all, all that all the, i was going down you know i don't get noticed very much and stuff but i mean i would be like in baltimore and someone would be like you know cooper you're my favorite i'm like you know and larry made i mean jb made up <laughs> All of that, that was, none of that was scripted. He went totally, you know, and we were sitting at this dinner table for, it seemed like forever, like four hours. We were delirious and I would be, you know, waiting on people and they're trying to move sets and lights and stuff. And we had like all this fake food and I would be, and I'd go, JB, did you, uh, did you eat a lot of gravy when you were, you know, growing up? Oh, let me tell you about gravy. And he would just go off on these steals and we would, I mean, I don't know, he, Peyton forgot about the deadline, forgot we were, you know, had a cut coming up and all that charades. He did all that, you know, ad lib. It was one of the more enjoyable days stuck in a room under lights in, in, you know, in someone else's clothes than I've ever, I've ever had. What a treat. That is, that is beautiful. I think I watched the Manning Hour. I think it was Manning Hour y'all did at Live Nightclub. Was it at Live in Miami for the Super Bowl? It was you, Peyton, and JV, and he comes in like, I don't know if he's like that all the time as a normal person, but he was basically like in character like he is on Curb, and he talks about, you know, bringing the ruckus to the ladies, you know, and all this type of shit. I was like, there's no one that can write this. Like, this has to be just, you know, ad lib, I'm going to do what I do. It is, yeah, it is innate. He is, no, there's nothing prepared about him. He is truly a uh, ad lib, gifted comedian and can can tell what the crowd needs and hits it and all I do is just sit there and laugh like an idiot. And I, I wish I'd come back with something. He, he's a nice, he's a nice person. And I, uh, I enjoyed my, my time. I'm glad to be, you know, I would have loved to work, to ever been a, spend a little time with Bob Einstein, you know, Funkhauser. I was talking about him mm-hmm. till I got Larry talking about him, but that was, I was always a big super Dave Osborne guy. So, but at least two of the curb, your, your enthusiasm stars I've got on my, uh, checklist. That's so cool. I love it. Uh, you mentioned Larry's golf game. Where are we at right now with your golf game? Is your golf game better or worse than your musical talent right now? Mm. Mm. You talking about my harmonica skills? What are we talking? I've about? heard a little bit about this harmonica. <laughs> you know, 
both are kind of all effort, no talent. It's getting, I think both are getting worse. I definitely, both are getting worse. Yes. How much you know, time do you log in on the old harmonica practice? Uh, you know, I've never had, well, when I'm around people that I'm going to be playing it for, I tell them how long I've been, I've been playing for a long time and I've, you know, I'm a trained guy. Therefore, they, when you don't sound so good, they think that they don't, they can't really tell. I've never had a lesson. I've, I've, you know, diddled around on the, you know, some guy trying to teach me how to do it, but I can't. I'm just, I, I play it when I rock, drive and, and where no one else is in there and just playing, you know, here I am playing the harmonica to the turnpike troubadours as best I can. But, you know, my handicap's going up on both harmonica and, <laughs> you know, and nine woods. Oh, uh, and nine woods. Nine woods. Yeah, we'll get to that. We did. We did play the member guests at New Orleans Country Club one year. Had a blast. Had some orange slushies. Yeah, they do. Good, have a good frozen there. And New Orleans Country yep. Club's been shut down, so it cranks back up October one. So I'm excited. Been been a year without golf. That's probably why my uh, you know handicap's going in the wrong direction. Is that because your man Heavy Biasteros destroyed it and they had to totally regrass it, or what? <laughs> heavy you know, Biasteros. That, that round we had with Wiggins <laughs> and Heavy Biasteros goes still is just a. It's kind of a locker room <laughs> legend. And, uh, you know, Drew, you, you, you know about it, but, you know, I, I was hitting, you know, three woods around a tree up, you know, through a bunker up there to 12 feet and making it. And, you know, and it was driving them crazy. And then Colt was just steady as ever and made a putt on the end. And, you know, Heavy, uh, who's from Cuba, we, you know, I told him, I told Colt, he, he can go, he can go bad if it doesn't go right. And that's called the Cuban Missile Crisis when it goes, when it gets, when it gets hot. <laughs> And he threw the pin at me and walked off and, you know, all the balls and gloves and everything. And it was, I knew it would be great podcast, um, you know, information for the, for your viewers. I know a lot of your listeners around here enjoyed it because they'd seen it before. So the legend yeah. lives. Putter, the putter at the oak tree, the big oak tree, walking yes. off the green. But the best part, <laughs> Sleaze, was this putt was to win the match. And it literally went up and went all the way around the hole behind and then fell in backwards, like at 12 o'clock. <laughs> and Heavy just lost his shit. It was so great. Hard to believe. <laughs> the Cuban Missile yeah. Crisis. By the way, once I heard his name was Heavy Bias there, I was like, this is the greatest thing of all time. And then now seeing all the texts that they send, I'm like, these dudes are the this is the greatest crew oh. I've ever heard of. This, uh, the, the crowd, I, I, I play golf with on Friday, you know, normally has got, uh, it's nothing but big characters. Everybody's got kind of a nickname and it's... Uh, no one is safe. It's it's very. Yeah, but the the name of our text chains are the deplorables. So that's that gives you an idea of how we think about our, ourselves. But I'm, I'm flattered to be uh, amongst them. They are. Um, they're, it's a witty bunch. That's a good good squad. Let's just say you and the you and Eli and Peyton go out. Everybody's a golfer. What's the game, and who wins? Uh, it depends kind of who our our fourth is. Peyton is such so competitive and a grinder. Eli's been working at it a lot. He played a lot this summer. And he got really good when he retired. He retired and COVID happened and he got a simulator. He was nowhere to go. And he came out, like he went from like a 11 to a four and now has kind of come back to reality. But um, yeah, I'm usually losing and paying all the money and hopefully, you know, telling a cult story or two and making him laugh to <laughs> forget that I, I cut it in half. Maybe we have great, that's really the best place for us to meet. We don't, Everybody's kind of, you know, got kids and going in different directions. And Eli's up in the Northeast and Peyton's out in Denver and I'm down here in New Orleans. And uh, if we ever can figure it out, golf is the best place for us to bring a pal, bring two pals. Um, I had a great trip down to, uh, we had 16 of us meet at O'Hoopy. Kind of, I turned 50 and it was kind of a good excuse. Eli's, I said, let's get a big group down there. And I brought, I brought Arch, I brought Highs, first their golf trip and had my dad. So Anytime we can get on the golf course and be around pals, that's that's our that's our sweet spot. It's the best. I was actually lucky enough to go up to Pine Valley. Your brother Eli hosted us up there, and we had ourselves a time. I might not be invited back. I don't think he was too impressed with my tequila consumption. Uh, ran the bill up pretty good, but we had a, an incredible time. Eli doesn't care about anything. Eli's going to live to he's 115. He doesn't. He's he's. <laughs> He never gets mad. He never gets sad. He doesn't care. I'll, I'll tell him something, and I'm like, oh, hot and bothered. He's like, who cares? I go, okay, <laughs> you're right. I mean, who cares about what? What? When, when do you start caring? He's got the best attitude and outlook, and uh, he's, uh, you know, 
if someone ever thinks Eli's mad at him, they're wrong. They just read, you know, they read it wrong, or he didn't care, or he forgot something. He just doesn't. He's uh, he's got a great, easygoing pace. I'm sure it drives his wife crazy, but I'm I'm jealous of it. He is awesome, and I mean, you know this. Like I'm a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan, so I've never been an Eli Manning fan. But that was the first time I ever got to meet him in person and to play golf with him. I was like, damn it, I actually really like you. Yeah, he's fun. There's nothing. If anybody doesn't like Eli, I always kind of say something's wrong with them because there's nothing not to like. He's generous and fun and he's easygoing great. and uh, he loves to play. And he doesn't live very far from Pine Valley, so that's a that's a treat for him to go over there and just do a little, you know, night afternoon, eat him up, drink him up, and play in the morning and get out of there. So uh, I think that he, Manning he, cast is. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. It cut out for a second. I was just gonna say, I think that Manning cast, like the way Eli comes across in that, because prior to that, I think you just saw the post game interviews and the pre game interviews and things, which are tough to like show your personality. Manning cast, I feel like there's a ton of people that maybe weren't huge fans of him when he was playing football. And now are like, this dude's great. He just likes to have a good time. You know, I think he's come out of his shell even more and more um, on this Manning cast, kind of free to be himself. And you know, you're. you're Probably, you're a little guarded when you're doing interviews and you're, and you're in New York and, you know, there are probably 10 times more people interviewing the Giants quarterback than there were interviewing the Colts quarterback. Just uh, markets, you know, I got multiple newspapers and overfollowed. And so he probably didn't get a chance to really show who he is. So now that, you know, it doesn't matter what he says, he's got, uh, he's got kind of a freedom, freedom to be himself. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's fun to see him shine. I'm, I'm, I've enjoyed kind of seeing this side of him. I know he's uh, he finds it probably pretty liberating. I really enjoy it when he even gives the uh, the hand signals occasionally on air. That's yeah, a good one, too. Afraid. Yeah, <laughs> double burns are kind of his <laughs> nobody. I guess anytime you're talking about the Philly fans, it seems like both fingers just start kind of coming up, you know, just kind yep. of right in the right spot. So I, I uh, agree with him about those Philly fans. Uh, but I did see one year you, you were doing an interview last night. You said y'all were doing a uh, speaking engagement, and your dad said, Yeah, I didn't know Eli had a personality until he was 40. <laughs> I, know. I know. I'm like, that, and Eli and I kind of looked at each other, you know, when you get, yeah, he, he, he did, he did not say much growing up. He was very quiet. And uh, I mean, the, the fact that Eli was 22 or whatever, 23, and going off to New York, I mean, you know, it, he, I thank God we had some friends who kind of took him by the wing because he didn't know. I mean, he didn't, he's just kind of looking around. I mean, and Eli <laughs> still has the amazing ability to this day to walk anywhere. I mean, I remember we could walk down when he was, you know, in year eight of playing for the Giants, he could be walking down Fifth Avenue and, you know, in a collared shirt and a pair of jeans and tennis shoes, and people like, eh, that might that look like Eli, but that's not him. It can't be him. He can kind of. Be still unassuming. Peyton walks in the whole place, just, you know, he could walk in at 7 Eleven in the middle of Scranton, you know, Scranton, Pennsylvania, the whole place, you know, they they know about it. But before he got out of there buying sunflower seeds, someone would be, have a mini helmet. Eli can still go incognito. <laughs> it's, it's a gift. <laughs> mini That's awesome. I have a mini helmet. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about New Orleans because the Super Bowl is there this year. It's mm. going to be a hell of a time. You know, I enjoy myself when I come down for the Zurich. Every year, if I was gonna, if someone was coming down for the Super Bowl and it was a restaurant they have to go to, where's it gonna be? God, it's so hard because New Orleans is just you know they're so blessed with what wonderful spots. Um, Maybe top three. Know, okay, there's a couple spots. If you're if you if you if you like New Orleans and think you like New Orleans, you have to have been to Clancy's and and gone dinner mm-hmm. there uptown. You know, just kind of this great neighborhood of house, house, house restaurant house house which is kind of cool how new orleans is um you know i'm a i'm a i'm a dirty fingernail spot and i'm a, you know I, I think to go to don Malisi's one day for lunch and get a fried shrimp po' boy and drink a a, a bark's root beer and some zaps is just something every human being does but, but football season is going on that's one thing right now going around to austin and you know and seeing these games my saturday saturdays during the fall I crave Don at, you know, 10 in the morning and I wait till 11 and call and pick it up. And, you know, it's just, it's, and then go there and sit there with your buddies. It's, it's, it's gold. And then, um, golly, you know, um, going over to Manali's and eating some raw oysters and then eating that barbecued shrimp. I mean, that'll, that'll change your life. I mean, I think I remember one that's time, where you, yeah, I, they, I think that's where you set me up this year. Couple beers eating raw oysters i mean just god it's the best what else is there 
That's yeah. it. That's all. That's all. Fellow needs. I, I remember one time. I'm at. I, it's a Friday night. We're getting ready to go over to the football game, the high school football game. And I got Hyde and a couple of his buddies. They're like six, and they're all at the bar. We could barely see over it. We got about four of them. And there's some people from out of town, kind of learning how to eat a raw oyster. And they're watching these kids, these six year olds, just you know eat dozen after dozen of raw oysters just in you know in absolute awe they're trying to you know hold their nose and, and suck one down so you uh you learn early how to how to eat the good stuff down here but um new orleans is fun i'd probably go by the kingpin go by the kingpin and have a few pops that's my local watering hole uh, tell okay. them I sent you. put it on put it on the tab it's a it's not a great looking spot but it sure is fun they let me dj wow. every now and then so it's good there you go uh can we do that next Busy. year during the zurich please that yeah, we got to go to the pen. That'd be fun. Best night at the pen, in my opinion, is Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Jive turkey night. Get after it. Everybody comes and feels terrible the <laughs> next day. It. So y'all are invited. Anytime, anything you need, let me know in New Orleans. I got you covered. You know I love that city. It, it is, sounds incredible. It is so much fun. I, I look forward to the Zurich every year. Speaking of that, you, you normally play in the Pro-Am. Give me your favorite tour player you've played in the Pro-Am with. Oh, you know, it's got to be DA points, right? Don't, <laughs> Don't stop it. Shut up. Lego man? <laughs> That's a long you, story. <laughs> you know, uh, I had a great time this year. I played with uh, Chesson, and I played with Grayson Sig. And Grayson Sig is, you know, a, you know, they look like Mutt and Jeff. Grayson Sig is about five, six, all calves. And I'm talking to him like on whole, I guess we're walking down hole one. And he mentions, I was asking about all the Georgia guys. He's a big Georgia guy, young guy on tour. And I said, um, and, and Chesson tells me that Grayson's father-in-law is the head coach, at golf coach at Georgia. And I went, really? And I said, is that how you made the team? And he, you know, he looked at me like, <laughs> you know, he gave me an F you and goes, we're going to get along just fine. So I really have enjoyed, oh, I'll tell you one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, 2007, uh, I'm at the draw party and I'm kind of asking advice. I said, "Give me a young guy who's coming up. Who you know, not everybody's going to be picking for. Who's going to make a make a run here?" They said, "You ought to play with Nick Watney." I said, "Perfect guy. You know, middle draw. Nick Watney next day, fresh fresh face, 23 year old from California. And at the Zurich, as you know, Cole, they have multiple food stands. They have all that crawfish etouffee and remoulades and alligator. And I'm trying to get Nick to to eat it and he's he's not really having a great day and i'm you know whatever 30 something and uh, i'm trying to motivate him and he's you know, we're having a good time and i i get I have a few beers and i said nick if you i have a feeling you're going to win this tournament you know i just feel it he, he had shot like 76 or so he wasn't playing it and i said if you win this tournament i will fly you to the next tournament you know i had the net worth of like you know a butter bean i think like 11 dollars <laughs> and so he goes Whatever. Sure enough, Nick gets hot and wins the Zurich. And on Sunday, he's texting me like, Cook, where is the bird? I'm ready to go. And I'm like, I've got all these Southwest free drink tickets. That's all I've got for him. <laughs> so he all, every time I see him, he gives me a hard time. We played golf the other day in Austin, and he is the best guy. He remembered everything about that story. And so um, I always like that. Zurich's a fun fun event. I always flattered to get to uh, get a bid to go play in the Pro-Am. It's a treat. Nick Watney. Uh, is a beauty. And you mentioned Grayson Sig because you know this other guy very well, but a couple years ago at the AT&T Pebble Beach, Grayson Sig's amateur partner was Finn Ewing. Okay. Oh, oh boy. So so oh. Com- combine they're 11 feet tall and they send me a picture. Just I'm not going to say what it looks like, but you can just imagine, okay? One of them on each side and in the middle was Paul Gasol. <laughs> so you can just go ahead and imagine what they look like standing there. It only got to Powell's, to Powell's belly button, and it was cut off. Would, yeah. Fans asked me to join his band, but I'm not sure my reputation oh my can God. afford to join that band. Dear goodness. Finn uh, Ewing uh, in he, the wrong direction. Is, they need, they need love, a harmonica at, guy? At Preston Trail, uh, by the little hot tub right there, they have that um, – uh, life life jacket that has Finn Ewing's name on it, just in case <laughs> the three feet is too much for him. Life preserver right there. <laughs> Dude, that's good. Sure. I didn't know that. Finn Ewing uh, is the greatest. Oh, man. God. Yeah. Um, that's beautiful. I tell you what, if you ever do join that band, I'm coming to the first show because I got to see this. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, uh, 
I got to practice a little bit more. Please send me your best harmonica instructor. I'm, I'm desperate. <laughs> Maybe just a little cameo, like one solo, in and out of the stage, boom, rock the crowd, done. You know, somehow the more the more the rum flows, the better you sound. I, I, I can't do <laughs> it. I got to have a little, a little liquid courage before I can do anything, harmonica. Yeah. But, um, I've, I've been in some rooms where some real talent, real musical talent is playing, you know, post rounds and just boys hanging out. And, uh, I mean, some way over my skis, and I've joined – and tr just trying not to ruin the evening. That's really the goal. I just I want to be a part of it, but not, you know, just a little, little, huh? you know, I got it in here somewhere. <laughs> it's always close to me. So. Oh, that's it's awesome. like cowbell. I love it. That's so it's good. like a cowbell. All right, let's let's get to the E nine here with Cooper Manning. And then we'll let you get out of here. But yes, um, sir. these are nine fun ones. Some of them might be from your friends. Some of them might not be. Um, you can probably figure out who some of them are from. But we start this off with everyone. If you could spend a day in someone else's shoes, anyone in the history of time, you get to be them for one day, who would it be? Ooh, probably uh, Don Rickles. Just I could just oh. you could just tear, tear everybody apart, and there's no there's no um, no damage. You know, just That's I love no it. repercussions. That's a first. I like that. Yeah, that'd be yeah. a fun one. They don't make them like Rickles anymore. The time no, seems to pass favorite, more or less. Someone mentioned the other day about Las Vegas. My favorite, and this is probably inappropriate, but my favorite line, someone asked him how long he had been in, you know, performing in Las Vegas, and he said he'd been there so long he was there when Siegfried and Roy were still pulling gerbils out of their ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so oh, good. He's so good. You can YouTube some of his stuff and just go down a rabbit hole. He's all time. Yep. All time. All right, that's a good one. That's I like that answer. All right, I'll give you one here. Why don't you get a shot, your brothers? Give me which is a faster top speed. Okay, Arches twenty point seven miles per hour he reached uh, a couple of weeks ago at Texas, or the combined top speed of both Eli and Peyton at any point during their career. You know those <laughs> those two didn't try. They, they, the fastest they ever run, ran was probably either being chased by a Doberman as a young boy or maybe on, you know, draft day when they had every the perfect start, but not. Arch got the wheels there. Those boys, they, they, they drive fast. Running is not it. I think. Where did Arch get the wheels from? Seven is motoring. I must have been. I'm, I think I must have been out of town, you know, one night on business when, like, you know, <laughs> Ronaldo yeah. Neal. Bio was in town and made sweet love to my wife, and there's Arch's dad. I mean, Usain <laughs> Bolt snuck in for a quick minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All oh, right, we good. talked about some of the nicknames. Heavy Biasteros, which is so simple yet so great. Give us a few of yep. your other favorite nicknames in the group and maybe your favorite nickname that they've given you. Oh, um Let's see. Yeah. Well, uh, w w Wiggins, his brother, is known as Duty, and I, you know, and Duty is uh, probably the most, uh, the worst person you would ever like to say, "Hey, play golf with this person," because they don't. He's on multiple, um, you know, he's got he got a lot going on. Very complicated. Duty. Um, <laughs> who else? Um, you know, Rosie's always interesting to play with. You know, he's got. Everything is tightened up. He's got 13 logos going on. He's a member of every club. You know, he's like Charles Howell. He has, you know, 14 friends in high school, and they're all in his bag. He's all clubs. Um, <laughs> who else? I don't know. Um, you know, I did have a um, – I did one time, and speaking of, the, you know, great nicknames, I did have – Peyton did invite me one time to play golf with Tiger a long time ago in the middle of his run, which was um, hysterical. Peyton was so nervous I was going to screw it up, and – and it was the best, one of the best things happened. We were at the turn, and um, it was right after Eli won the Super Bowl, and some old guy kind of creeps up in a golf cart, looks right at Peyton, and he goes, how you doing, Eli? And Tiger was like, yes. You know, oh, oh was, no. <laughs> and I looked at Tiger, and I said, don't feel so great. He thought you were Cuba Gooding Jr., and he laughed pretty hard. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> That's good. Where would you, uh, where, because I know you have a few nicknames from the boys down there. Where would you rank Leangelo? Oh, Leangelo. <laughs> that's okay. You got to give Jose, uh, heavy by Sarah's, full credit for Leangelo being the third, you know, uh, 
<laughs> the third. Yeah. You, if you if you get offended by anything down here or any, you know, you're you're gonna be playing golf alone. So you take it and love it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Leandro very, 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 very is so high, good. Very clever. Leangelo is, for those people who don't know, we're referring to the Ball family, and Leangelo yeah. might not be the best of the Ball family. <laughs> it's great. I have another good, you know, uh, uh, I have a, a good, Chet from uh, Weird Science. He's in our group, too. Chet, you know, the big brother. Okay. Um, well, um, Red, um, Fabio, we have um, Coach. We have, It's a good, there's no... Uh, it's it's all golly. It's, I'm just not sure if this is PG 13 or R, but it's it's an it's R rated. Perfectly bike. fine. Yeah, yeah. Damone. It is. Of course, Damone who's angry. He only rides by himself, but he does let me ride with him sometimes. You play you play, you know, three carts, four guys. Damone does not like anybody riding with him. <laughs> I like that. You better have thick skin down there in New Orleans. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Just the names Correct. of these dudes, they sound unbelievable. Sounds like a great crew. Yeah, y'all y'all um, need to come down. Believe me, we could have uh, we could have a fun we could have a fun outing. Yes, we might have to come down for that Zurich. Yep, for that Zurich next year. Maybe hit some of those spots Definitely. you were talking about oh, yeah. too. Oh, open um, arms, come on. Done. All right, I'm going to ask you one of the great questions ever posed on the Manning Cast, or maybe just in sports journalism. Period. Eli <laughs> once asked Ray Lewis the following: Would you rather have ten thousand dollars cash or one of Peyton's helmets filled with quarters? What's the answer? <laughs> That's such a good question. So good. Uh, what did Ray say to that? He I actually, just, he started I just, he just laughed. Laughing. Yeah, I don't even know that he answered it. <laughs> I actually kind of want to know which one has the higher value. Oh, it's got to be those quarters. That's a big head. You could, you could put, that's got to be well into the $15,000 range. I think Ray would be making money taking the coins. God, it's that, such a good question. That was like one of the first ever like, Manning casts. Yeah, I think that's when I was like, oh my God, Eli's unbelievable. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, someone um, must have been smoking weed on staff. Something's up there. I don't, Eli couldn't have thought of that by himself. And he gave it to Ray Lewis, too, which I was like, this is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> on a side note, when are you going to be on the Manning cast? You know, I think I, I, I think I, they just think too many men. <laughs> two is enough. Three may I may ruin it, could get canceled, or I might take one of their jobs. So it's probably just a threat across the board. <laughs> Good point. Just, that's yeah. probably what yeah. it is. I, I love I, it. You, I, I'd had you be on, on here subpar any day of the week. I think that's this is kind You're of more, more than life. welcome. Yeah. Open invite here. Yeah. But I do laugh that we got a brother who's never been on there, and then Brandon Stokely, Stoke can't one of get Peyton's on. best friends, has never been asked Stoke to come is, on. Stoke has legitimately heard about this coop. Like he's like, he's like, I don't know. Yeah, I thought I'd be first season. You know, we're on season nine. Can't even get. I can't even get fifteen minutes. Uh, is is Stoke not? Does he not have the worst golf etiquette of anybody? I mean, literally, you know, big putts down. Like miss it, miss it, miss it. I mean. <laughs> He is uh, uh he's a salty little dog. I guess you gotta be just a little turd, tough, you know, son of a gun to play fifteen years at wide receiver, you know, when you're five eight, one nothing, you know. And he's he's a running tough. Yeah, coming the across the hash marks, just getting leveled every oh. time. I gotta keep your job. You drop one, Peyton, rip your head off. Oh man. So uh, good. But yeah, he's <laughs> hurt that he hadn't been on that manning cast. I wish you could have seen what Stokely was wearing in college. He looked like, I mean, a combination of vanilla ice and like the, you know, Scooby Doo van. You couldn't tell, like, just, you know, <laughs> jeans Scooby-Doo with all van. kind of outfit. Oh, he was the worst dresser. He, he, was a, he was phenomenal. You know, the frosted tips, it was beautiful. Oh, uh, he's, so, I love he's so bougie. He's so pretty. Awesome. Um, next one true or false? When Eli was quarterback at Ole Miss, you would go out on the town Friday night and tell people you were Eli. False. I did it more with Peyton, actually. <clears throat> there's, there's a story. I was in downtown Knoxville one night, and I, you know, I was drinking scotch and smoking cigars or something, and and night before a game, and someone came over to me, like you know, you know, UT, you know, overalls, just huge fans, like Peyton. What in the hell are you doing out? I'm like, look, don't worry about it. We're just playing Vanderbilt tomorrow. And we're, we're <laughs> Peyton got in trouble, but uh, you know, no, I don't. <laughs> I never tried to beat anybody. Some people would think I was someone. I was like, I might, you know, mess with them, but I certainly was never trying to be anyone other than, uh, you know, just head down. 
Uh, but God. we're looking like more and more today. And more. Someone called me today and said, Eli was in town last week, and I was out of town. He went to work out. And someone's like, God, Eli, you, I mean, Cooper, you put on some nice weight. You look pretty good. So I got to go because I got to start hitting the, <laughs> hitting the tricep machine a little harder. I'm too skinny. <laughs> That's all you need for motivation right there. Uh, I'll give you a little fun one here. You kind of touched on it earlier, but is it true your son Arch picked his jersey number to pay homage to the number of head covers you have in your golf bag currently? <laughs> Yes. I love that. Is, yes. I, yeah. I have more head covers than friends. No doubt about it. His number is 16, by the way, for anyone unaware. Yeah, you just you just is there a is there a club limit? Not in the tournaments I'm playing in. Clearly. Not in your tournaments, <laughs> no. Oh, uh, my caddies just hate it. Like, oh uh, sir, you got you know, I have them all different colors and um yeah, I mean not everybody can hit a what do you I mean, what are you gonna hit from one thirty five? I mean, you gotta you gotta hit it high. <laughs> That's a 13 wood. The it nine, sounds like the nine hybrid. <laughs> How many do you have? How many head covers are in the bag right now? Would you say? Well, I don't. I don't have any. My lowest iron is a seven iron, and I have 15 clubs. So you know, I've got. A, you know, I got, got a few. You got I'm thinking about getting rid of the. I'm thinking about rid of the three wood. I can't hit it anymore, so I might just get something higher. Oh, that's great. Oh, you gotta have options. You're an artist. Um. God, I don't know if I want to go to this next one, but you told me I kind of could. Um, oh, here we go. Maybe uh, worst thing you've ever done to a boss's car. Oh, oh my God! The sushi kicked <laughs> in. You know? It just, you know, it it happens. It happens. You know, it happens. It was leather, brand new Mercedes, leather seats, huh? Leather seats. Thank <laughs> God. You know, manure spitter, jackknife yeah. on the Santa Ana. What are you going to do? God, that's great. Hey, what's the? Uh, they were telling us about this toilet at uh, some bar, Fat Something. Y'all have a name yeah, for the Har- toilet there? Fat Harry's. Yeah, that that's that's something I don't think I ever did. They had the silver bullet, just this, you know, metal, you know, like prison <laughs> toilet, if you will, that lived at Fat Harry's. That was always kind of a a badge of honor if you could go in there and then you know you'd have to sit, no no stall, you know, no just walls. a urinal next door. I don't, I don't there was think a, I ever did There was a nickname for it. That's tough. That's got to be in case of emergency was, break glass. Was it not called the Silver Bullet? I always thought that's what I called it. No, it's, they called it the DeLorean. DeLorean. Oh, yes. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Back yes, future. that's it. Yeah. The DeLorean. I never took oh, a ride with the DeLorean, but I sure thought about it a couple times. I maybe ran home. Hilarious. <laughs> Fat, Harry, Fat oh. Harry's is where all... Good stories start in the youth of New Orleans. The boot, and then it goes right to Fat Harry's. Those are, uh, yeah, great memories. Yeah, I got. I wow. brought Eli one time. I came home one night. I think I had to be home for curfew or something. I was probably seventeen or eighteen, and or maybe I was home from college. Maybe I was home from college. Probably twenty. And Eli was thirteen, and uh, and I was home, and I'd had a few pops, and I, he was hungry, and I was hungry. And I got him to drive back to Fat Harry's at, at the age of 13 and come in with me. And the guy, you know, I snuck him in and we got caught. And he, the guy was yelling at me and Eli was mad and embarrassed. I mean, 13 was probably not the right right age to, you know, 15, you're fine. But 13 yeah, is yeah, it's perfectly fine. 13 is fine for the driving, just not the bar. Driving around New Orleans at 13. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's no <laughs> so problem. The bars, you got to yeah. be 15. <laughs> All right. All right. This is my last one here. For you, Coop, and I'm asking for a friend, okay? Uh-huh. We're genuinely curious. What is the refund policy if a young man gets sent to the Manning Passing Academy and then immediately gets moved to defensive line the following week by his head football coach? That's how much he <laughs> improved. Uh, you're a D end, actually. We, we've had multiple people, like I, we've had some quarterbacks. I'm like, now, you know, let me see you throw it. I go, now throw it with your good arm. You got to be you're left-handed, right? Because that can't be it. We can't help you, sir. And uh, yeah, we've had some. That's a great place. Also, I would I would encourage y'all to come down to Thibodeau, Louisiana, at Nickel State University in late June. Weather's perfect. Beer's cold. You know, grass is cut, and stories galore. We've had a lot of uh, terrific personnel from coaches. We, you know, from the. the Sean Payton's going to the wrong house at a party to John Gruden to, uh, and to Bill Belichick. I mean, you, and, and everyone in between, and every coach and every grandson and nephew, Robert Kraft, 
everybody's come down there. So there's uh, stories galore coming up on our 30th year. It is a, it is, a, it is the, other than the golf course, that is one place every year you can guarantee that you will see my dad, Peyton, and Eli. We're all rooming together, uh, you know, sharing toothpaste, eating cereal in the morning, and uh, um, those are tons of memories and, and, and great friends, and it's kind of a badge of honor. That's, That's awesome. good stuff. I've good heard stuff. I've heard some incredible stories come from down there. All right, my last one. Freshman year, Ole Miss. Did you happen to lose a foot race to a frat boy at any moment? Yeah, I was touching on that the other day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was this little little uh, sophomore year ahead of me named Billy Thompson, who Colt. Y'all y- have similar. Uh, you know, <laughs> I've heard this. <laughs> physiques. <laughs> And he's less athletic than you, I assure you. But, I, you know, he had come to school as a track star, he said. And then I think he went to one track practice and went straight to the, you know, buffet. And he he was bragging about how fast he was. And I was like, I'm tired of hearing about this. I'll whip your ass. Let's do it. Where do you want to do it? It was tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock. And this was at midnight. And he was hammered. I'm like, there's no way he's getting up. He comes down at 530 in his spikes, in these, like, tights stretched ready and like oh dear god what have i gotten into we go jump the fence at the Ole Miss track got all my fraternity pledge brothers happy and the 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 race was a 200 yard dash and the bet was the loser has to streak down sorority row that day at noon from the five mu house to the kappa house about a good 120 yard run at noon on a and so god and that little bastard could run he was fast i don't know if he was he, he beat i didn't even finish i got to about 100 yards and i, I mean it was just like he kicked it i was leading pretty good and then whew, i mean i went holy cow so uh that day i, had, I called my dad i said dad and i lost this dumb bet i gotta run it was cold i think i put on a pair of tidy whities the last minute just because it was cold I, 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 had, I had a reputation to protect kind of stuffed it with a couple socks and i I hit the motor. I always tell people mm-hmm. if I had run that mm-hmm. fast from the cap from five meter to the cap house as I was against Billy, I would have won. And I told him if I get arrested, this is what it's for. But I made it, and uh, you know, Billy loves that. Billy, every time he hears that, that's I get a text from him like you know, just you know, you know anniversaries. I, I whipped your ass, you know, eighteen years God. ago, twenty years ago, twenty five years ago. So he's uh, what a bat I, Downs- I got a reputation to protect. <laughs> so I threw some socks in. Uh, that's good. Uh, that's good. Were the girls impressed as you were running down Sorority Row? I, I almost hit two of them, and one of them was on a kind of a, a, a bike, and I was kind of weaving and almost stumbled. That could have been a, a serious, you know, flesh wound. But, uh, no, it wasn't much to write home about. It was, it was, you know, a brisk 50, and I was I was moving at, at good speed. Nothing, nothing to write home about. You're a man of your word. That is, yeah, you paid up. I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, Coop, man, always fun catching up with you. Look forward to seeing you in New Orleans during the Zurich, but man, you're the best. I'm a big fan. Thanks for having me on. And uh, come see me in Austin or New Orleans. We'll take good care of you. Yes, sir. You got it, my man. Thank you. Well, Sleaze, (laughs) that was a fun one. Cooper Manning, what a beauty he is. Can't thank him enough for coming on this. I mean, the stories this guy's got, he is Leangelo. hilarious. Leangelo. That's, yes, as he will be referred to going forward. I mean, when I went down there the first time I played with these guys, and I hear heavy Ballesteros and Leangelo, I'm like, God damn, that is that is greatness. They seem to get it. They get it done. We need to do that, Zurich. We should go down there, film a few shows, go out there. I need to meet these dudes. I need to meet Heavy. I want to meet this Wiggins. Saw some of the texts. <laughs> freaking beautiful you guys are bad Wiggins friends. was the guy that's like hey ask him about my son who went to Manning Passing Academy and he came over two days later his coach moved him to D-line <laughs> <laughs> it was good man oh, he is so good he is awesome some of those Manning hours they're great I mentioned the the Cam Newton one I was dying laughing uh watching those last night but he's just he's a great personality man it's and to it's got to be a little tough like being I mean your brothers are Eli and Peyton and all anybody wants to do is talk about them but then you got him he's He's hilarious. He's an entrepreneur, very, very successful man, and he's killing it in the media world, too. I mean, this is 10 years he's been doing the Manning Hour. By the way, have you ever watched, like, the start of it where it says where it says the Cooper Manning Hour minus 58 minutes? (laughs) (laughs) I I, I catch him on, like, YouTube, and they're awesome because it's, I mean, hopefully 
somewhat kind of what we try to do here is just like the dudes are just having fun they're not really they're not talking about their sport or their stuff like it, it's a lot of it's just messing around you got dudes from all different areas of entertainment jb smooth sounds like he's an all-timer all time and he gets to meet so many people like just play with larry uh you know it's a nice gig and it, it wouldn't be lasting for 10 years if, if people didn't like it yeah. he's he's tough to beat that whole family is they're solid. They're rock solid. I tell you, when we were playing, the member guest at New Orleans Country Club, and we were going down one of the fairways, and he was like, oh, yeah, my dad's going to come out and watch a little bit. And his dad, like, drove around and watched us play the back, and I'm like, this is Archie Manning is following us right now. This is so cool. Yeah. I mean, just, all oh, I just feel like they get it. The three, you know, they're hard not to like. Even Eli, who I would say, like, for a while while he was playing, was maybe had the, the you know, wasn't the most loved guy. And then he gets done and he's on the Manning cast. I'm like, he's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, you know, Cooper says, like, if you don't like Eli, then something, you got something wrong with you. Little trick, just down, when you're down in New Orleans, you call, get a reservation, just say, it's under Manning. Yeah, it's a good way to get <laughs> it. Work. That's a good, good that way to get That is some good in. eating down there. God, I love it. Yeah, he had some spots. Mm. We'll have to hit him. It was so much fun with him. Uh, we definitely got to do that Zerk trip. It'll be, it'll be awesome. And best of luck to his son, Arch. I mean, he is. I don't think stud. he needs luck. Yeah. I don't I think mean, he needs much luck. Just, Obviously, Texas number one team in the country right now. Quinn Ewers is going to come back, looking good to obviously make the playoffs, possibly win a national championship, and then hand the reins over to Arch and uh, start it up at the shoe next year. Yeah, that's a that it's uh, props to Texas for scheduling these big games. Went to Michigan this year, they're playing Ohio State. They don't have to do that, especially after moving to the SEC with that schedule. But kudos to them. And yeah, I mean, the hype train is going to be out of control depending on what Texas does this year. But then when they pass the reins to Arch, it's like they ain't, nobody's expecting them to take a step back. It's going to be. Fun to watch him, and I think it was cool he went to a place where he didn't have to be the guy right away and got to actually kind of, for the last time probably in his life, not be under the microscope as much as he's going to be yeah. from pretty much now going forward. Yep, going to be fun to watch him. But uh, let's get to a little gambling. We got the President's Cup this week. USA minus 220, internationals plus 220. You can bet a tie at plus 1,400. It's going to be really hard for me. I, mm. I'm probably I'm not going to touch it. Bet I just, that tie. I think it's a horrible bet. That tie bet. feels yeah. like a good play. Uh, but minus 220, that's, just, that's a lot of juice to lay, but I do think – USA is a big favorite, and they should be. Yep. Uh, it's time to zone in real quick. Let me tell you about this before we get going on our actual picks. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Underage sale is prohibited. Introducing Zone Nicotine Pouches, the perfect balance of unparalleled comfort, longer-lasting flavor, and nicotine that satisfies. Whether you're zoning in for an important putt or zoning out after a tough day at work, Zone gets you there faster and keeps you there longer. Available in seven flavors and in six and nine milligram strengths. Find Zone at zonepouches.com and retailers near you. Own your zone with Zone Nicotine Pouches. I got a little nine milli peppermint in right now. I will be locked in. Well, I hope you're enjoying it. Well, we also got this if you're watching on yeah. YouTube. This sick little Kyle Busch NASCAR here. Well, autographed on the windshield. We're going to be uh, heading up to Vegas later this year and shooting a little content with Kyle Busch. Really looking forward to that. Show him how we get around in a oh, vehicle. Buddy. You know what I mean? Oh, buddy. Buckle up, Kyle. <laughs> All right, let's get to some picks. Uh, so far in football this year, 2-0. and If you count SMU, I'm 3-0. and uh, Game's under by appeal. The way, by the way, they won in case, you're, in case you forgot. Is that this weekend? Uh, it's this weekend. I missed that. Big Big games this week. Georgia, Alabama this nice. weekend going to be awesome. Uh, I'm not going to touch that one. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy and watch it. For my football bet of the weekend, I'm going to go with your boys, the Denver Broncos. Hello, sweetheart. Getting seven points, coming off a win, going up against Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets on the road. Denver's defense is really good. Um, Jets have been okay. Not what you expect from Aaron Rodgers, So, but seven points I think is a lot. I love that. Uh, give me the Broncos. I love that. And then we will only be three and a half games. Every out, win <laughs> really matters. The bar's not super high, boys. We just need six out of you. Sean, go get us six. We got one last week that I wasn't expecting. Yep. But one and two, kind of about where I thought we'd be after three. But everything's fine. Love that pick. It would be really fun to have a team to cheer for and that it's relevant. Uh, again, I'm going to the college game. I'm staying in the SEC. OU went down to Tennessee this past week. Tennessee, I think, is incredibly good. That freshman quarterback is a stud. Uh, they're heading to Auburn, who has zero quarterback. Huge quarterback issues. Hugh Freeze saying some wild shit, too. They're only giving two and a half points to Auburn. I think OU runs over Auburn. That's the pick of the week. Sleazy pick of the week. Jordan I could Hare. use a couple of dubs. Jordan Hare, tough place to play, though. Yeah, I mean, shit. There's some Cal and a few others. I don't think it's too damn tough. And that Cal ain't OU. Uh, myself and Mr. Peter Tomasulo, the great reverend, had a little fun with Sir Charles after Cal went down there and beat Auburn. Yeah, Cal, you know, a lot of people 
Auburn's the Berkeley of Alabama, <laughs> people do say, you know. There's a uh, bunch of smart kids battling it out. All right. Well, make sure you go check out that new fall collection over at RLX Polo. Thanks to Zone. Once again, Golf Kohler, incredible place, Whistling Straits. And Cooper Manning, and Coop. you are an absolute beauty. Thanks so much for coming on, and we'll talk to you on next week's Subpar.